we get into today's video, I want to quickly thank today's sponsorship. Thank you so much to Columbia Basin Foundation for sponsoring today's video. If you guys have younger kids that are just struggling to get into reading or maybe you're struggling to find a book for them and getting a kid to even engage in a book sometimes can be almost impossible and you don't even know if it's worth your money to spend on books if your kid's not going to even engage with them or even want to interact with them and that's where this place comes into complete and full power where they will send you a free book every single month curated for your child just fill out a simple form giving some basic information about where you live and where to send it and then you follow some information about your child their interests their day-to-day -day likings their reading material their reading level their understanding their comprehension and the entire little thing just about your kid and the things that bring them joy and they will send you a free book every month curated to your child that you can engage with they also offer scholarships and other education materials and resources completely on them all they ask is that if and when you have some extra cash or some extra money lying around to maybe donate to the charity to help out with more funds so that they can continue giving money back to the schools i heavily heavily support this kind of cause of getting younger kids engaged as soon as possible i am absolutely think it's so important. I have seen countless times, and even when I was in elementary school, I saw it happen countless times where people would use quiet corners while reading or silent reading as a punishment for in for acting up into the classroom. And I hate the fact that reading in itself has gotten such a negative stigma around it when I know how amazing and how mind changing it can be to enjoy a good book. And so I truly believe that getting kids engaged as soon as possible with book reading and interested in engaging in that kind of creativity and that those kind of worlds can be very powerful for their imagination and the longevity. I also love the fact that this is a completely free ability. This is a charity work basing. You give what you can and they will give you what you need. I have donated money to these guys countless times because I truly believe in what they are doing and the work that they are doing for your kids. To so this month, I got my free book. Here I got a little like, like a little like sticker thing. This is like their address, um, their logo, the name of the company. The other side has my address on it, so we're not going to show that. And this month I got the little engine that could. Honestly, this is a classic. This is the 90th anniversary of this book, and it's a classic book. I feel like all of us have read this at one time in their lives. And also, again, you can curate this to their age level and comprehension level so that you're not going to be getting anything too high or too low. And whether you're reading it to them or they're reading it themselves, again, you can vary that as well. It's, com again, a completely free place. There's no charge to you, no shipping, no nothing. Just donate if you can. So use the link in my description below and get started on your free book. Just fill out the form, answer a few questions, and just wait for your book to arrive. And other materials, of course, are going to be on there as well as far as scholarships, education material, and what they stand for in their education bases. So if you guys are interested, please check, it, check them out. Donate if you can. But happy reading and enjoy the rest of this video. Hi guys, welcome to or welcome back to Brianna's life, aka my life. Today I wanted to share with you guys my top tips for maintaining productivity while also still working from home. I obviously was in college during the pandemic, so I had to deal with schoolwork when uh, everyone was at home, and I remember the struggle that it was to maintain. And even now, out of college, I still work from home, whether it's maintaining my YouTube career, or it's building my website and my name in the digital production fields, or even applying to remote positions to gain experience through internships, fellowships, and freelance material. I always have done things that are just home-based. That's just kind of the career that I ended up choosing. And I know good and well how difficult it can be to actually maintain a schedule and maintain productivity when you're in the comfort of your own bedroom. And I think now that I've been out of school for a year and like three months, I have definitely picked up a thing or two on how to maintain that schedule and how to maintain um, that ability so that I could share with you guys some of the things that I do on on an everyday basis and that are simple small things that actually make a big difference in my overall day-to-day -day productivity and actually getting stuff done. This can work whether you have schoolwork, main work, or you're simply just trying to create a routine while you're looking for work. This will be some good tips that should help you along the way. So 
let's just get into the video. Tip number one, don't make your bed an option. Making your bed a workspace, not only will it ruin your sleep schedule, but also you're never gonna get anything done. Make your bed the place and the reward that you go to when your work is complete. Get an office chair and sit in an office instead of a desk. Or if you can't have a desk in your room, uh, then sit at the, the dinner table or find a space outside that you can work in. Making your bed your workspace can be very, very complicated and can really screw you up, especially if you're not already really well at getting your work done at a desk. You're not going to be any more better at a, at a bed. I promise I made that mistake when I was in school of trying to do work on my bed and uh, I wasn't successful. So if you can, I highly, highly encourage getting a desk or a table or somewhere else that you can sit to do work because you're going to fall asleep, let's be honest. Make your bed look fast, put stuff together, and don't touch your bed again until you're done with work. Make your bed the reward, not the place. I promise. You will feel way more productive if you sit in a chair. I can't explain the science, I can just tell you the facts. Get dressed. There is something about getting dressed that actually makes you want to get work done. I don't care if you're putting on a pair of leggings and a casual shirt, if you want to put on a dress, a suit, jeans, I don't care. Avoid pajama pajamas at all. Avoid sweats, avoid hoodies, avoid comfy clothes, okay? Getting dressed and dressing the part as if you were actually going to go into school or go into work is going to make you want to get things done. It's some kind of scientific thing. Apparently there was a study done that people who get dressed are more productive than those that stay in pajamas because of the transition from relaxation to work mode. It's a weird transition. It's like going from your bed to a chair. It's the same kind of similar study, just with different items. So I highly recommend just throwing on some clothes because I promise you're going to feel far, far more productive. All right, now onto the desktop work. See, usually if you're working from home, you're gonna be working on a computer of some kind. I know that mine is still set to July. I need to go in and make a new one for August. Um, but I love having organized based desktops, something for my personal enjoyment, my work, inspirational stuff if I have anything, and then like a little quote that I love to live by. If you try and fail, you just succeeded at trying, which is one of my favorite quotes. And then the internet and stuff and having some things that make me happy. And then the calendar, which obviously I said I need to change this. Um, but honestly, I love organizing my desktop this way and I just find it to be more productive. And this is something that brings me a lot of happiness. Little miniature fluffy cows just bring me so much happiness. So this is something that I will enjoy looking at all day long. Use all the time is Notion AI. Notion AI is probably one of my favorite platforms to use to keep all of my digital work together. It maintains everything that I need, no problem. And I absolutely just love using this to get stuff done. It makes all of these things so much easier. Again, this is not sp sponsored by Notion AI. But Notion AI, if you would like to sponsor me, I'd be happy to work with you because I love using this and I've been using this platform now for a long time. And it's been probably one of my favorite things over the past nine to 10 months. So I have my calendar with all of my YouTube video, ASMR video, website postings, and any other dates that may come up. As you can tell, your girl's busy. Um, between posting on my website, maintaining ASMR content, and this channel's content. I definitely don't have a lot of room, but I love using this and I love working with this. And also I have September and October all sitting, you know, in here ready to be filled with whatever they may bring. As you can see today, when I'm filming this, I have a posting to do, which I will do once I'm done recording. But this is going up right now, or the day that you're watching. Well, this is the video you're watching. <laughs> so it kind of is such a weird little like uh, 
behind the scenes. Here I keep all of my ideas. I have them all hidden in a little group of like items I'm gonna launch, blog posts, emails. This has all been um, cleared out from last month and ready for this month. I just don't have anything yet to link or post. Um, and then my to-do list or tasks for today. So film content, apply for outside work, write, answer emails, work on product ideas, uh, website posting edits, find inspiration for today, practice a hobby or learn something new, TikTok posting for my new account, uh, and then don't forget to drink water. So just things, and I can kind of just right now, I can go here and check that off because I have completed that as I'm doing it as we speak. And then here I have like an, a digital inspirational board of things that just make me happy and special templates and content. But overall, for the generalized just using of this kind of stuff, it's completely free and it keeps all of my digital work digital. And it helps me maintain productivity because I'm not having to buy all this extra stuff and maintain it on paper when I can just do it right here. If you prefer using Google Calendar and Google Spreads, that's totally fine. I used to do that when I first started. I just kind of like Notion AI because can have it all in one area and not on different platforms like that. But just do whatever works best for you. But honestly, I love, love Notion AI. Okay, now another thing that I would highly recommend having or using is having everything that you're gonna need at your desk at that time. Like today, I wanted to drink a coffee. So I had a coffee sitting here that I was drinking earlier this morning. Um, when I had breakfast, I made sure I grabbed it before I sat down. I have this pencil pouch that I keep all of my stuff in. Um, I have my notebooks that I have sitting here. I have my uh, huge, abundantly, unnecessarily stack of business cards that I made. And I have my own personal business cards for my website, for my freelance work that I do. Um, even though I never have in-person clients, I still have them because I want to have them if I ever need them. And they're just nice to have at my desk because I, I feel productive. I feel organized. I feel important. Another thing that I really recommend having are these kind of sticky notes. So these sticky notes are something that I got from the World Market um, with my friend Brooke. And these cases are impossible to open and you will break it all doing this. But I promise it's worth it. Eee. Example point. Um, but getting these uh, little things I have like to do lists um, and things like that are really really great. Like for me, I have like reminders here, um, and it just another really cool thing that you can have to help kind of just stick to your computer or stick around you if this is your style and honestly i think i've said this before but know how you work and know how you work the best if that means turning on some lo-fi music or jazz music or that means being in complete silence or if that means having something on in the background that is okay my mom works with a movie playing i work sometimes with like coffee shop ambience going like learn how you perform the best and do that. There's a lot of people that love white noise or black noise or yellow noise or blue noise, all those different new noises that have created that help with the mind and focusing. So honestly, learn how you work and learn what keeps you focused and then make that part of your routine because you're going to be able to focus better. Um, and don't forget to eat, drink water, drink your, drink your drinks, eat your food take breaks. I love doing the Pomodoro method. It's probably one of my favorite methods, which is four increments of 25 minute pieces of work with five minute breaks in between. And then afterwards I have done a hundred minutes of work, which means that I can go and have a lunch break or a finish for my day. And then I know I've been productive and I've gotten most of the things off of my list. It, it's just it's a nice, fun way to make sure that I'm staying focused, but I'm not feeling like I'm overworked. Um, but yeah, those were my top pieces of advice for maintaining productivity. If these helped, let me know. If you have any more advice for anybody else, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!